Popular Science presents a backstage preview of television, the newest miracle of modern electrical engineering. Technicians in the Farnsworth Philadelphia laboratories have helped to make television, the dazzling dream of the decade, a practical reality today. Mr. Philo T. Farnsworth, shown at the right, is working on the image dissector tube, a photoelectric camera tube of his own invention that distinguishes his system of television from others. It is said to be responsible for the most clearly defined television pictures. Placed in the circuit of this receiving system is a funnel-shaped cathode tube. The round, flat surface of its bulb becomes the picture screen in studio monitor sets, as well as in home receiving sets. The image dissector tube and the cathode oscillite tube are the heart and brain of the Farnsworth system. Television engineers are now adjusting studio equipment to demonstrate the technical routine of broadcasting a television program. Max Factor Jr. has developed a new type makeup for television photography. The photoelectronic camera, being super sensitive to red, causes that color to be absorbed. Thus, red is applied to hollows and depressions of the face to eliminate heavy lines and also to produce highlights. While blue, which reproduces darkly, is used as eyeshadow. The facial makeup of the modern movie queen makes her a dream of loveliness. But the television star has the grotesque appearance of a circus clown. The new television makeup may give the camera a break but the wearer's first view of herself is likely to break her heart, unless she has a sense of humor. In this camera is an image dissector tube. The camera lens picks up the artist as an image of light, causing electrodes in the dissector tube to emit electrons. Passing through station equipment, the electrons become radio impulses to be broadcast and picked up by receiving sets where the routine is reversed. The radio impulses becoming points of light that appear on the screen as pictures. 30 pictures are completed every second, these pictures are composed of 200,000 light points that strike the screen one at a time at the rate of six million points per second. Music and sound accompany the performer's action, both visible and audible elements going on the air in perfect synchronization. As the action is photographed from various angles, engineers at control board select long shots and close-ups, editing the show as it passes instantly through the station's facility. Traveling with the speed of light through a maze of tubes and equipment, the show leaves the station's sending towers to be viewed by the television public, an audience as yet small and comparatively ignorant of the enormous research and experiment that makes it possible for us to see and hear people many miles away. We can even see the announcer, although that annoying necessity is still protected by distance. The camera swings round on the next act. While radio can portray the art of the ventriloquist, Television makes it possible to witness the magician's sleight of hand from a distance for the first time. Silent, invisible, instantly, human speech, music, and appearance pervade the airways together to be received in magic boxes for distant reproduction. It may not be long before news events and current world happenings will be witnessed in thousands of homes. Television may picture for those at home the work of far-off explorers, or it may reveal to military officials the details of distant maneuvers. The most fanciful dream of mankind is today a startling reality, destined to become the world's most popular science.